Hey guys, this is Scholar General Mojian Uh Today I want to respond to a couple channels that have been recently talking about the role of grappling in sword fighting. Now, the first video was from Oz from the channel English Martial Arts. He made a video where he basically said that everyone who trains sword fighting should also practice a grappling art and become proficient in a grappling art before they, you know, really get into the sword stuff. And then there was a response to that made by Matt Easton from Skull of Gladiatoria, where he basically argued that, you know, some weapons might need this uh, grappling training, while other ones, uh, such as Saber, probably don't. And um, then in response to that, Oz also kind of reinforced his point to some extent by saying that the grappling gives you some basic fundamental skills that help you in just the sword fighting in general. And I gotta say, I love their channels and I'm gonna leave links to all the videos in the description below, so make sure you go check those out. So in this video, I kinda wanna you know put forth my ideas about uh, the relationship between sword fighting and grappling, and I'm responding to them, but I'm also responding to, you know, more generally on the internet, you'll often find MMA or, you know, grappling art people who will talk about how important wrestling is in sword fighting. And I feel like, many of them uh, miss the picture and the nuances involved. And I actually want to begin this by looking at an early modern English fencing master, George Silver, who makes a claim that whenever there's two rapierists of equal skill facing against one another, the one who's a better grappler will win. And if they don't know how to grapple, then the stronger one will win. Uh, just physical strength. This quote has kind of been fairly widespread and popularized on the internet by both fencers and non-fencers alike. I think that both Oz and Matt would kind of agree with the general premise of, you know, whenever equal skills involved, then being able to grapple uh, is the advantage that can lead to victory. Now, when many people hear this idea, they're like, well, then why even do sword fighting? You know, because if you're a good enough grappler, you can just kind of grapple. Uh, however, I think that many people who do modern grappling arts and MMA, they really kind of misinterpret and misunderstand this idea. We have to think about equal skill, right? Equal skill in sword fighting. So if you train sword fighting and then you go against someone who's never trained before, but they're a good grappler, it doesn't really matter because you have the techniques and the strategy to keep them from getting close to you and strike them while they're coming in. It's kind of like a grappler saying, I'm really good at grappling. I'm going to go against like a boxer and I'm not gonna get jabbed while I enter and like shoot for a double leg or something like that. And that's just the thing about sword fighting is that something like a jab can be lethal. So you can't just expect that having the grappling ability can override the necessity to be good at sword fighting in a sword fight. That seems obvious, but I just thought I would throw that out there because some people sometimes seem to think otherwise. So now let's get into the more interesting question of how do different sword types impact grappling? And furthermore, you know, you, since you are watching this channel, I assume that you like sword fighting and you want to learn to sword fight. Uh, should you learn grappling or not? Right? That's the ultimate question for this video. In the back and forth between Matt and Oz, um, they kind of point out that something like longsword and messer frequently involve a lot more grappling than many military saber systems and other swords that come later in history. And Matt kind of thinks that um, the medieval systems have a lot more heavy grappling influence in part because of you know the presence of armor sometimes and things like that and Oz kind of hints at the fact that you know the bind the emphasis on the bind or like connecting with their sword and moving in with the connection is uh, something that leads to grappling more frequently in the earlier systems um, I think both of those are pretty good points but I actually think that uh, if we look at a broader context of, you know, all kinds of swords and across different cultures and areas of history, I think that there's different factors going on for the relationship between swords and wrestling. For example, there's a big distinction in my mind between grappling with one-handed swords and two-handed swords. Uh, with two-handed swords, you know, so a lot of the time with like long sword or nihonto, you come in and you strike together and then so often you, the hands will go up in trying to get the higher bind. And then whenever both hands are up and, and both people are kind of pushing into each other, it's almost like a, a sprawl or a clinch situation where all of a sudden the person who can grapple and has those grappling skills can immediately just take one of their techniques straight from their modern grappling system and apply it in a longsword uh, long fight. 
And, you know, I frequently see this with a lot of judo foot sweeps or, you know, some people even like injure this and then they blast for the double leg from just standard wrestling. Um, the, but the main thing is that both swords and your arms both become occupied and then they enter this situation where it's no longer practical and the reach is too short to actually use the weapon effectively. So therefore, you revert to completely standard grappling. I should add that there are caveats like half sorting, for example, with a long sword changes the grappling dynamic. In addition to that, you also you do have um, moves from treatises where you hold the long sword with one hand in a grappling situation. However, I think that in tournaments, you can frequently see the situation where, you know, both people get bound up and then the sword essentially becomes kind of useless because they're too close together to use it and both their hands are on it. So then the person has a good opportunity to just go for grappling. Whenever we look at one-handed swords, things can get a little more complicated. And this actually brings me to what I think is the most important factor when thinking about grappling with swords, and that is length of the blade or reach. The, whenever you think of messer and long sword, you think of a much longer blade and a much shorter blade, and grappling is very important in both of them. However, I think that it's important for different reasons, and this also gets into rapier and everything else. So whenever we have an extremely long blade, we can even imagine a spear, for example. Uh, a spear it is extremely long range, it can thrust. Now, you might not think it's a good idea to know how to grapple if two people have a spear, but there can be situation where both people get past each other's point, and whenever that happens, the spear becomes essentially completely useless, and you're forced into a grappling situation. Now, if both spear people are good, or if one of them is slightly better or better enough than the other, this doesn't have to happen, but it can happen. And that's when the grappling really comes in. And I th also think that this concept applies to the rapier as well as to an extent to the small sword where, you know, they're th quite thrust centric. They don't cut as effectively. And whenever you get past that point, you're not left with as many options but to grapple. However, if the sword can cut and the sword becomes a lot shorter, all of a sudden, grappling becomes almost inevitable uh, just by the nature of its use. However, conversely, as the grappling becomes more common with shorter weapons, it also changes the dynamic of the grappling itself. The most extreme version of this would be to have two people with like some short knives, maybe like five inch blades or like 15 centimeter blades. And if you get that, and you, or you just give two people markers, and then you ask them to start, you know, acting like they're having a knife fight, of course, they're going to be trying to grab and control with their offhand. They're going to be trying to use their structure and posture and like in grappling. But the real thing they're going to be doing is using their knife and just kind of, you know, jabbing the person like crazy. And this means that a lot of the specific techniques that you use in uh, grappling won't necessarily apply because the priorities kind of change. Your priority is control their weapon, use your weapon as opposed to, you know, control their center of mass and then, you know, get them on the ground. A lot of the grappling involved in Messer is about controlling the opponent's sword and then using your sword. And this also applies to Chinese Daofa and uh, uh, many other martial arts, Filipino martial arts, all kinds of other things. Yes, it's grappling, but the better grappler does not necessarily know how to do this. My friend Vincent Tsung, who runs the channel The Wandering Warrior, has some first-hand experience with this. Uh, first of all, I gotta say, you know, everybody who watches my videos should definitely go check out Vincent's channel because there's a lot of great stuff there. Vincent is a very experienced grappler. He has meddled in Shuaijou competitions. In addition to that, he's trained with some world-class wrestlers in Inner Mongolia. And recently, he went on a trip to the Philippines where he explored some uh, really cool Filipino martial arts stuff. While he was there, he went against a FMA instructor in a stick fight. The instructor was able to fairly consistently uh, beat him in a type of grappling situation, whereby the instructor could, you know, grab his stick arm or sword arm, control it, and then also use his stick to attack Vincent. The instructor even admitted that Vincent is a better grappler than he is, but because the priorities are different whenever you're wrestling over a weapon, it doesn't necessarily mean that the better overall wrestler or sport wrestler would actually win in this context. I definitely think it's true that if you're an experienced grappler in a modern system, you could very quickly adapt to the new priorities involved in grappling with a weapon. However, uh, we can't take that for granted in all cases. And then if we think about something like Military Saber, which is not known for having as many grappling techniques, I would say that this is largely due to the fact that it's long, but not super long, and it can also cut. So after they get in range, you can still use your Saber quite effectively, 
In addition to that, the footwork is very good at quick retreats, which is not something that we see in like Messer with all the passing steps. And all this kind of brings me to my final conclusion, which is that yes, studying a modern grappling system can be very helpful in sword fighting for certain swords more so than others. And I know that Oz feels that the basic fundamentals of grappling and the footwork and the grit and the conditioning of things are much higher than in like a HEMA club. And while that may be true to an extent, uh, I'm still not convinced that you necessarily need to learn how to grapple in order to get those things because Olympic fencing and other weapon specific sports also have really good training regimens that can teach you footwork and all this other stuff really well. And you don't necessarily have to earn that through grappling. So I think that, you know, if you're studying a weapon that's quite short and you're going to be in grappling range a lot, it would do a whole lot of good to study grappling for like a year and a half or so before you really dive into the sword. And I also think that if you're doing a two-handed sword, it's also probably a good idea to learn some grappling because it tends to come out quite a bit whenever both people kind of move into each other. Um, not all grappling arts are going to be equal here. And this is something that Oz hasn't exactly mentioned in detail. I'm sure he would agree with this, but um, you know, something like BJJ is not going to equip you, I would argue, as well as just wrestling or judo even for most sword fighting purposes. Uh, you could argue maybe about some of the wrist mechanics and wrist locks could be useful for disarming people. However, that's quite niche and the mechanics also change with the weapon in hand. All that being said, I think that the thing which the grappling arts really give you, which you can't really get very well in sword fighting, is having a good structure in, in your lower back especially and being able to push in with your head uh, as well as being extremely good at keeping your balance. I mean, in, in judo, it's like it's all about breaking their balance and keeping your balance. And in sword fighting, yes, you have to keep your balance while you're moving around, but it's a lot different than trying to keep your balance whenever they're trying to take yours away. So down in the comments below, tell me what you think. Do you think you need to study grappling if you're going to learn how to sword fight? Uh, thank you all for watching. Please subscribe and don't forget to stay sharp.